march on. Y'all mad, we sit down. We sit down. Y'all mad, we speak up. We speak Y'all up. mad, but when we die outside and when we march. Y'all mad, we sit down. We sit Y'all mad, we speak up. We speak Y'all up. mad. But when we die outside, I ain't playing with y'all, oh no, nah, hell no. Nah. I ain't playing with y'all, oh no, nah, hell no. Nah. I ain't playing with y'all, oh no, nah, hell no. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome back to another episode of Behind the Curtain Art of Protest, where we sit down with some of Senegal's creatives to explore how they use their various art forms as an expression of social protest. Uh, and today, we get to dive into the world of dance and movement. So I hope you'll stick around with us as we get ready to go there. But first, as always, we like to start off with a free bite to get the juices flowing. So here we go. So part of what's so important about protest art is intention. And that's why each day we like to start off with a two minute free write to reflect. Uh, the free write is generally a quote uh, from the thought leader, Archie Lord. So what happens is I'll tell you the quote, and then we'll take two minutes to listen to some cool little music, and then, you know, write down the thoughts that come up for us in relation to that particular quote. And today's quote is, when I dare to be powerful, to use my strength in the service of my vision, then it becomes less and less important whether I'm afraid. So what does that quote mean to you? How do you see yourself playing it out in your life? The time has started. Let's go. So thank you for taking that time for yourself. If you feel moved, please feel free to share any thoughts of what you came up with in the comment section. Either way, I challenge you over the next moment, over the next week, to see how you can own your power, right? And that means how do you show up? How do you uh, go beyond the fear? So the question you might be asking yourself is, how does dance and movement actually change the world? Well, there are countless examples throughout history, throughout the world of protest art. And as always, your daily homework is to actually take a few minutes to actually look up some of these forms and examples throughout the world. But for now, we have the amazing Andrea C. here to give us a little bit of a history lesson and acknowledge one of the ways in which dance and movement has been used as a work of protest. So here's this week's edition of Trailblazers, a protest. 
Hey everyone, thanks Kendrick. It's Andrea again talking art protest history. Um, this week we're going to focus on dance and the history of how dance has been used over time to tell stories, to highlight issues. In the 1940s, dancer Pearl Primus uses movement to tell the story of lynchings happening all over the American South as well as other parts of the country. Um, and in this movement, the words of a poem are playing detailing a lynching and she is creating movement on the stage to it. This sets um, sets up lots of dancers to continue to use the medium in a way that highlights difficult stories um, that stands up against the rest of mainstream dance that is you know not so much using their performances for that. Um, if we move forward to the 1960s we have Alvin Ailey who creates um, who choreographs the dance Revelations um, and in Revelations again the story of the African -American American people is told and he doesn't leave out difficult parts right we explore um, some other things and so that is a form that people you've seen companies do on the street um, during protests or during rallies and marches or speeches you will see that movement and that formation um, put together by companies and they're also inspired by it in some of the other movements that they do um, later 1960s the black arts movement is happening and at this point, we've got whole companies being created whose purpose is to highlight blackness, to highlight their stories, um, to dig into some more of ownership of the culture um, and make sure that the intent behind these companies, which are theater, music, um, dance, are all using their um, their art to protest either the mainstream norms or to protest things that are happening throughout the country. Um, if we move forward to our time, like I mentioned, crumping, um, voguing is something that you'll see happening. And so the LGBT community has used voguing as a communication form and it has a culture of its own in the balls. But when you see voguing on the street, there is something about folks moving proudly as an affront to an oppressive system that moves you. You know, whether you're marching alongside them or you're seeing video on social media, um, you see the bravery that it takes one to be out there and to be included and then also to use this dance form to continue to just sort of like, you know, it is a big screw you to the folks who are doing the oppressing um, in whatever the situation is. Um, because at women's marches, Black Lives Matter, Dreamers marches, um, all of these are spaces where you can see different kinds of dance being used. Um, and so over time, We've got these different dance forms happening. We've got folks who are feeling free to bring their entire selves to the movement, to use their art form for the better good. Um, and so there's a really powerful one about saying um, folks' names who've been murdered by the police and it's choreographed with tap, um, tap dancers and then the music behind them um, saying the name of people that have been lost, right? So that's tracing back again to African drum circles, to the use of this movement and percussion. Um, one of the other um, West African traditions that we see show up from sometimes at protests is capoeira, right? So as a dance form in its own right, capoeira is a protest, right? Um, woven into the dance moves, which look a lot of times like fighting and dancing all mixed together, there are West African cultures that it was illegal to share about that are mixed into um, the dance that we're seeing. And so capoeira has become synonymous as well with folks who are using dance for another purpose, for a deeper purpose. And so um, the this was brought from West Africa to Brazil and then in, I would say around the 60s and later, folks in the state start to learn about the movement and then use it as a means to, you know, build strength in communities. Um, it can also, like I've seen it happening outside of jails, outside of rallies um, to get folks ready and also to just tell the story of how enslaved people overcame using the arts. So again, we could talk for a long time about dance and how amazing it is to see it at protests, but dance itself, either on stage or on the streets, is definitely a form of protest. Back to you all. Thanks, Andrew, for that wonderful information. Always good to add a little bit of history uh, to these expressions. But now we get to move on to uh, the meetup today, where we get to sit down with our guest artists. And today we have two amazing dancers uh, and movement specialists, if you will, uh, Kiyomi Tarver and Dr. Grace John. So let me introduce you to them 
and then you'll get to actually meet them and see this amazing conversation that we had. Uh, Kiyomi Tarbe is a dancer, poet, and a choreographer who uses the, her art to explore her relationship with vulnerability and self-awareness. She shares her personal experiences as a vehicle for self-expression and freedom. Kiyomi has showcased her work on various stages and in respectable institutions, including SDSU, Yale University, and the Brooklyn Museum of Art, as well as Summer Stage. Uh, she is the director and master facilitator of Abundance with Kiyomi, where she provides resources to support accessing personal abundance. Her workshop series, The Abundance Within, is a movement and mindless workshop exploring abundance in the body, spirit, and mind. And our other guest, uh, Dr. Grace Jung, is a mother, wife, artist, scholar, organizer, and mover who creates and educates on the territory of the Kumaya Nation. Uh, she is a child of hip hop culture. Her movement practice is infused with historical and contextual education and centers community, compassion, and empowerment to encourage rhythm and expression. Grace founded and directs BK Soul, an award-winning performance company that merges together movement, poetry, uh, music, to center issues of social justice. She is a founding core member of the Asian Solidarity Collective and most recently has been in collaboration with the Global Dance Meditation for Black Liberation Street Dance Activism, a 28-day meditation series. Grace continues to research uh, hip hop, dance, and culture and teaches at UCSD, Senegal City College, and with Transcendence Youth Arts. So I got a chance to have a conversation with Kiyomi and Grace, uh, specifically why I enjoy the fact that, you know, we've collaborated for over a decade in terms of with BK Soul, Collective Purpose, bringing together these mediums of art uh, with so much heart and it's been our blood, sweat and tears and joy to be able to bring it. So we get to talk a little bit about that and then the overall process. So let's check that out. I am happy to introduce uh, Ms. Kiyomi Tarver and Dr. Grace John Mills. <laughs> <laughs> so ladies, how y'all doing? I'm great. I'm really good. I'm excited. All right. So um, just in terms of before we get, you know, too deep into it, um, you know, Keo is actually all the way in New York. So shout out to her for uh, joining us. Uh, but Grace wanted to start out with uh, land acknowledgement. So Grace. Yes, I invite you all to join me in the breathing, moving land acknowledgement if you are able. So if you can just put the intention to the space in front of you, taking your hands out if you'd like. We're going to take a collective breath really focusing on the indigenous lands that we live on. I am here in San Diego on Kumeyaay land, the stolen and unceded territory of the Kumeyaay nation. So just putting our love and energy to the indigenous folks past and present here. Take an inhale together and exhale. Inhale, bring your hands to your heart, putting the intention to love and compassion. Exhale, opening out. Inhale, bring your hands to your mind, putting the intention to knowledge and producing knowledge that brings justice and power to those that are here with us. Exhale, opening out. Inhale, bringing all of that together, that energy together, bringing it above us and bringing it to our head, to our heart, and then back to the earth on the native land that we move and live on. Thank you for allowing me to do that. Thank you for that. You're going to bring it all in. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually happy to start with that because uh, as we begin these conversations about, you know, protest art and how people show up for that, I think it's very much a space of, you know, our personal journey as it relates to the, to the you know, the journey of humanity, so to speak, and how we come into awareness of things. I think the space that we're in right now socially reflects that, right? You know, everything in terms of, 
uh, you know, police brutality and the injustices, you know, beyond that are really allowing people to, you know, develop a sense of awareness or come into a sense of awareness and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of one of the, the beauties of art because it allows us to kind of push that notion, challenge those status quo notions of, you know, the way things are. So, uh, I really, you know, I'm thankful to have this conversation because I, you know, I want us as people, as communities to really think about how we're navigating the world with, you know, this level of awareness and not let it just be when something, tr you know, dramatic or traumatic happens or, you know, tragic happens that, you know, then we have to be aware, right? How can we, you know, maintain this awareness, you know, throughout our experience and learn and grow? So as, you know, we're having this conversation, you good folks at home, I want you to think about how do you show up to these spaces, be it your work, be it just your community? Uh, how are you actually showing up and engaging with people? Uh, so on that note, uh, and I let whoever wants to start, uh, but in terms of, you know, you coming into this space uh, and recognize that your art is a form of protest, uh, can you talk a little bit about that, what that journey has been like for you? Yeah, I'll start. I, if you would have asked me years ago if my art was protest, I probably would have said no. Um, I think once I started to realize my existence was a form of protest as well, um, that really started to change the way that I saw um, speaking up. Uh, I remember when I first, when I was living in San Diego, um, a lot of my work was around colorism because it was my experience at the time. Um, as I moved to New York and I see more people who look like me who, um, who actually um, celebrate um, all shades of black women, um, my, uh, my art started to change because that was no longer something that I was protesting against. It was something that was accepted, you know? So then as I fell in love, um, that became a part of my protest of like allowing myself to feel these, uh, feel uh, love and to see how it shapes me and what it teaches me about myself. So what I've had to learn is that um, since, I, since my existence is a form of protest, um, my, what I create also gets to be in response to that because a lot of my art is a reflection of my life, what I'm experiencing, my point of view, my perspective, and then learning that protest is something that can change as I change. You know, um, something big for me is that I, I, I used to think I wasn't an activist, you know, because I wasn't out with the signs and out, you know, in resistance to what's going on. But I didn't realize that love is a form of activism. Where do the people on the front lines go after when they are standing for other people? They get to come to my dance class. They get to come and experience abundance and know that they're enough to fill their own cup. So when they're out protesting for other people, that also includes them. You know, if the protest doesn't include us, then um, I think it actually does a disservice to everyone. Mm. So, um, yes, me realizing that my existence was a form of protest really informed my art. No. I, I like that aspect of, you know, the personal protest, right? Because it's, it's always there. And, and knowing that when you move spaces, that aspects of identity, they get shifted, they get impacted differently because of the nature of the space that you're in as well. So, uh, Grace, how about you? Um, well, for me, um, I did not like to speak in public. I was afraid to do it. I don't know if some of it has to do with cultural um, conceptions, you know, like there's, there's like the quiet Asian girl, like living up to that, but that's not what I was, but I knew that I didn't like to speak, but I, my body always was moving. My body was always speaking. So for me, dancing has always been a form of protest in terms of uh, pushing up against stereotypes of what I'm supposed to be and the right. way that I should move. And um, it's been really important to really investigate what my body is speaking and the language that it's speaking, particularly as an Asian American woman who practices a black cultural art form as hip hop. Um, and understanding that my body doesn't speak the same, but it has something to say and how I can use my body in terms of support, in terms of protesting the things that I don't see um, being right and uh, really thinking about like all art has the potential to be protest, but not all art is protest. Right. right. So you, you both have spoken about, you know, how your own personal journey of identity has also picked up, impacted this 
um, you know, the way your art protests and how you show up. What has been, uh, you know, when you think about the, the our journey, right? The things that we do, right? What has been maybe something that you have to overcome, you know, along with that perception of what the protest is, uh, but what else did you have to kind of get beyond to allow yourself to hold this space? Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> for me, <clears throat> I'm realizing that a lot of my art um, is a reflection of things that I'm still learning or a reflection of things that I'm still looking to receive. Um, so not necessarily having to figure it out and have um, all the answers for it to be a stand for it, you know, um, that the fact that what what it invokes in me still matters and is important, you know, I think that was really big. And uh, as artists, you know, not letting how it's going to be perceived really shape the way I'm um, showing up in my art. So actually, I'm happy you said that because I, I know that some people probably look at what you do. And like, <laughs> okay, uh, where is the protest in this? Like, you know, so okay, like what about that particular piece where folks are just like, uh, she teaching up to Yeah, work. yeah. And you know what I love about that? Because I was teaching twerk outside and coming from praise dance. So my conversation was, can God still love me or can I still be worthy and holy and move my body in a way that still honors me and makes me feel free and whole? And I, what I had to figure out is that if I'm, if I don't feel free and whole, then am I connected to God? Mm. And I think there was an opportunity for me to be like, yo, um, it doesn't matter. This body belongs to you. And uh, if God wants me to experience freedom, why would I be condemned for this? You know, and I think it gives opportunity for people to be able to be in their body in a, in a very different way. Um, I've had people who've taken twerk class and they cried after because they've never allowed themselves to be in their body in such a way where they can shake things up and have a new and different experience or uh, um, to connect with sensuality or sexuality. You know what I mean? I think sometimes we always connect twerking and the booty to sex when it's not. There are times I'm twerking, there's nobody in the room and it's only to celebrate this body and celebrate how I feel in here, you know? Um, there are times we cut the lights off and we're twerking and people feel like they're in another space, you know? So if that's not magic and if that's not manifestation in God, um, then I don't know what is, but it really took me to a different level in my spirituality and my permission to be like this body belongs to me and you get to have that same permission in your body and what does it give you access to you know uh last thing I want to say also knowing my feelings in my body allows my brain to inform what I'm feeling so is it shame what I'm feeling is it room to feel something else as an empowerment what I'm feeling so it starts in the head and then I think it goes into the body so I, I just I hear teaching us how to twerk for Jesus. I love the fact. <laughs> that, you know, Absolutely. I, I love, but I love the fact that you talk about that hold that space and feeling between head because I think a lot of us are so disconnected, you know, between our actual body as well as you know the heart and the mind and whatnot. So uh, appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Grace? What did I have to get over? Yeah. Um, well, for me, it was, I came, I came into dance really late in life. Mm -hmm. I didn't start when I was two. I started training in college. And, and for me, it was this point where um, hip hop wasn't, it wasn't in the studios, it wasn't at colleges. And it was this, this point of, do I keep investigating what this means to me and what it helps me express or do I just abandon that and go this traditional modern dance kind of route and during grad school it was really a point being in New York I I said I have to listen to what I what I want to do and what I want to share and there were very few companies at the time that I wanted to dance with and learn from and it felt like a real big reach in terms of my ability at that time. So I just created my own work. I created BK Soul. I created a space to be with artists that I connected with, um, with you two, where we, we have created a community, a family, where we share the same sort of foundation and mindset and the importance of work 
Um, and I guess I had to get over that, like, fitting in the boxes, because that's really not me anyway. So just, and then just staying with it, being like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And then, you know, five years later, four years later, meeting um, now Dr. Ant Black and right. really <laughs> having a great connection with him that opened up this world to the deeper work that I've been able to collaborate with. Uh, and that we've been able to do um, and really making the work for us because I really believe it's survival for us. We have right. to make this work. And it's it's not for the the critics. It's right. not for a, a review. It's for us. It's for the community. It's for us to to heal together, to express together and and share. Okay. I love that. Uh, can you talk about, because, you know, we've been fortunate to collaborate on a few things. Uh, so maybe one related to us and then maybe something else. But what is uh, one of the collaborations or, you know, that has truly impacted you, you know, in, in your own journey or that you would like or it had the impact to others that you wanted it to have? Let me start with you, Grace. Uh, I think every every work we've done has impacted. Mm me and I want to share. I think um, from the get-go, our work has been really focused on social justice and bringing light specifically to uh, Black stories via you, Kendrick, um, Aunt, also Rudy early on, and then bringing in Maisha. These are spoken word poets. Asking for me to come dance. Um, really important. You know, everybody. Jesse making the music, Siobhan coming in to sing, Ian being a dancer early on, Lauren and Lavina, like all these people, um, not these people, all of you, my family, um, have have voices that need to share and we, we share together. Um, but I particularly, I think the one that's probably had the deepest or maybe the most profound and per maybe it's the time where things started clicking I had just finished um, my PhD and we created the work Illegible that started mm -hmm. in 2014 and then we finished it out in 2015 and it was really addressing at that time the Black Lives Matter movement and, and the, the buddingness of it at, um, then and, and then just all the shootings and the killings and it just ramping up and it really being like, for me, clicking in that moment of like, this is what I can do. This is my power as an Asian American artist. This is how I bring myself and I understand what solidarity means and, and showing up and um, opening space for, for uh, this work. So, so actually, that's something I want you to speak to as well. Like, you know, being an Asian American and a lot of your your work, uh, you know, deals with the black experience. Like, I know in this space, you have a lot of people who are waking up to the the black experience and wanting to support. But uh, in your particular journey, you know, how have you gotten so comfortable in that in that space? By having relationships, by creating a space where we have a community and we're family, like. So you, said, so you said you, you actually know black people? <laughs> 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 they aren't just people around you and that you kind of see on TV. It's, I'm like, you, you have black people in your life, for real? <laughs> yeah, just a few. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna make sure. Um, Let's get a picture, Jesse. Uh, <laughs> All right, babies. No, um, yeah, I think one of the important and, and stress is like building community, and and that means like showing up and going into into places you may not be comfortable with, but really creating um, intimate relationships with. Right. right. And and not just creating art with somebody because oh they're cool. It will boost myself up. We'll do this right. thing. And we'll move on. You know, we've right. been working together for almost fourteen years, oh right? My. Like, if you think about four, fifteen. Yeah, yeah, 15, yeah. Right? right. Yeah. Yeah. So this is this is not a quick one stop like 
let's do this and move on. It's been really important to invest. Right. For sure. Thanks. And I want to piggyback off what Grace said because I think you investing has really um has really supported the way you teach. You know, I think it was your class the first time that I heard the breakdown of the elements of hip hop. Um, or, you know, breaking down of having us go research our favorite MC or go figure out who our favorite DJ was, you know, and I, that really started to inform my practice that if we're not talking about the elements of hip hop, we're not talking about these very fundamental um, ingredients of what informs this experience, then um, I think it, it's on the surface when there's really an opportunity to look within. There's also an opportunity to see people learn differently. So people learn by seeing visual art. So people learn by listening with the DJ. So people learn by actually writing out their own story. So people learn actually by doing it. So I think you teaching it the way you did allowed hip hop to be just a genre of music more than a, than a movement. It actually, you pointed out that it's a lifestyle, it's a culture, it's actually something that you can take and create your own. Um, I, working with um, Hip Hop Save My Life, I think that was a huge turning point for me um, because I think I was um, at City College and I was doing these modern dancing, which is great, which was fun, but it did not register in my body the same than being able to have Hip Hop Save My Life and yes, we're doing hip hop and it's hip hop movement, but it left a lot of room for me to show up in my body differently than maybe I've seen it commercially on TV, right? Um, it, it left room for me to not create a disconnect so I can say, oh, I can't do that. But then I got to see while hip hop um, is an experience, it doesn't have to look one way and it, and, and it, and it gets to evolve. And if you're not being yourself, then uh, you're really missing out on what hip hop gets to be because hip hop is about people showing up as themselves with their style, with their stories, with their um, movement. So I think working with Hip Hop Save My Life is the same way that I experienced in your, in your classes. If you're not showing up authentically as yourself, ready to learn and ready to give, um, there's really an opportunity, there's something that we, um, I think we're missing out on the opportunity to really be with hip hop in a different way as a lifestyle. Um, so yeah, that, that that's one of the biggest collaborations that I have. Also doing Elephant where like, I ain't got no shirt on, right? Uh, I collaborated with uh, four women who um, who were completely different. One was you know one did the body paint, one did the poem, uh, one uh, another one uh, did the uh, the videography. You know, and even the fact that the the poet didn't want to be um, in the video. Mm -hmm. It's not about me. These are my words, but they're going to see you. Even that space of like trust in someone else's art and in creating room for someone to show up fully where people can just see one thing like oh it's only them and for her to be like no it's us but it's okay you can you you can be in the forefront but I'm clear that you're a representation of all of us like that level of trust um changed my life just how hip-hop um hip-hop saved my life changed my life I think it informs love and war I think hip-hop saved my life gave room for love and war so yes yeah, I think the collaboration allows it informs the art and it gives room for it to look differently Right. So let's, because uh, I think we're kind of drawing down on time, but what I would like, because there's a lot of people at home that are watching that are trying to figure out their space, you know, in this realm of, you know, activism and, and protest for their own journey. Uh, what would you say to someone who is, especially, you know, any artists that are trying to figure out their space, what would you say to them in terms of, you know, allowing themselves to show up in that particular way? Mm -hmm. This to talk to the people on the other side. <laughs> first thing that oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> we both took our time. You know, first thing that comes to mind is trust yourself. You know what I mean? Um, you know, for me, I wanted to put out the things that I wanted to see. You know, that that included me. And when I didn't see the things that included me, I got it to create myself, created myself. So you know, trusting myself, also doing research, not from a point of um, copying, right? But from a, a place of like inspiration or from a space of like um, um, being able to pay homage. Paying homage is so huge, you know what I mean? So um, yes, I would say trust yourself, go for it and um, do some research. Yeah, I, I would I would add just like thinking about what is your intent and what is your the impact that you want? 
why are you making this? Who are you making it for? Just finding what those answers are. But ultimately, like, you have to make it for yourself. You can't run around trying to please somebody because then it's going to shift into something else. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's what you want it to be. But but just being aware mm -hmm. of who is your audience and um, what are you trying to say um, and, and what impact are you trying to leave? Um, I think it gets... It gets tricky when you when you want to create something that's over here. Um, we're we're gonna make mistakes. Like I even think of like going back to hip hop, say my life. Like oh, I think I would change this or let's redo it and let's make it better. You know, like things can always be better, whatever that means. But um, just staying focused and and being with like real deep relationships with with artists and people that you trust that can give you the feedback. Uh, of what they're receiving and how that's how that's landing. Um, be in a community of artists. Don't be alone. Uh, well, we're gonna get ready and, and close things out. But I did have one more question, just because I'm, I'm just kind of curious. Uh, so, like, having shared the stage with you both and us doing different things, like, I, I can say for me that there was a couple of times where I was like, oh, what did I, what did, what did I get myself into? Uh, and so and so I'm curious, has there ever been a moment of like, you know, that realization where it was just like, oh, or maybe it, you're not realizing the initial impact that maybe, you know, you were just coming to, to do what you do, but not realizing like, yo, wow, this is, this is may, maybe even more than I expected it to be or the, the reception from, from people just hit in a way that really made that experience even more impactful for you. If that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, when you said that, I think about you, we never know we're gonna get when we're on stage with you either. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> so there's that. But even that of like trusting yourself, you know what I mean? I've had to learn, you know what I mean? If I did my best, you know what I mean? And I did my part, that it gets to be enough. And, you know, with praise dance, there are times I'm dancing, I'm giving my all. And then someone's like, yo, you don't know what you did for me. You know what I mean? You, you, you don't know how you encouraged me. Um, you don't know what room it gave, you know? So I think, um, yeah, I think it happens all the time. You know, I think, but I think it's a room of like giving it your all and um, impressing myself first. You know what I mean? And then I think it leaves room for other people to have the same experience or not. And then not being about whether or not they agree with you. Did you feel something? Did it invoke something in you? Even if it's disagreement, it still invokes something in you. Gotcha. What was the question? So yeah. it was just, has there ever been a moment where, you know, you either just kind of stepped into a moment and, you know, maybe it hit you, the impact that, you, that was happening, or somebody after the fact kind of came and, and, and their expression of a appreciation or whatnot or their expression of to what you did who just hit, just impacted you in a way that you might not have expected I, I think early on when I restaged my MFA thesis here in San Diego I had brought a couple people together brought some folks from New York and um, just knowing that what I was doing was different from what was happening here in San Diego particularly, uh, and maybe even just the collaborations with Collective Purpose and the poetry. Uh, it wasn't something that was being done at all, I believe. Um, but that creating something in our space, being like, you don't have to go the route that you think you should do because that's, that's valid or that's the way artists should be. Um, I, I got a lot of good feedback from my students at that time and saying that, like, th they wanted to be a part of it. So, gotcha. and then hip hop saved my life, too. You know, we had sold out shows four nights in a row and just people coming back because they were hungry for something that wasn't just, uh, we sit here, you, you watch us dance or, you know, the fourth wall being broken where it's, it's interactive, it's it's reaching out, you know, bringing people on stage to cipher, like letting them experience it. 
So, yeah. Now, and I think that's kind of one of the things that makes, you know, the expression of art so important because you have to step into it. Um, and, and, and with, you know, whatever form of art that you do, who you are and how you bring that to the table is such an integral part of that expression and especially when it becomes a form of protest. So um, I think one of the things I want our listeners uh, to really take home is, you know, it's really about that journey of self and you and how you choose to show up in the world and your identity plays such a huge space in that. So uh, with that, we want you to be able to dive inside of you to help us get to where we need to go. So on that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to Behind the Curtain with Kendrick Dow. Thank you to our guests today, Ms. Kiyomi and Grace. Wonderful, wonderful. Check out their work. They have tons of stuff out there. So um, we're going to add all the social media handles and all that good stuff. Uh, Kiyo is going to invite y'all to twerk for Jesus. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's going to be amazing experience. Uh, Grace is teaching dance and hip hop. play. You doing that virtually this go around? Yes. Oh wow, that's that's a journey. Okay, but well, we might have to come to your class. You know, go ahead. She's she's decided to. We might keep it basic. We're gonna just do a two step. Because <laughs> everybody. Can. <laughs> Don't be playing, Kendra. You be dancing, bro. Oh, hey, I didn't say me. I'm okay, talking, good. Talking right. about everybody out there that ain't, right. ain't got two like, got two left feet. You know Making sure you wasn't so playing I, yourself. I I get on the floor. We know that. <laughs> Is that mine? All right. All right, good folks. Well, thank you for tuning in again. Um, and uh, we're going to call that a wrap. Beep. My process to creation, it varies. Um, there's a lot of things that inspire me. There's a lot of things that motivates me. So sometimes it's music. And when it comes to music, it may inform uh, where I want to play in the music. Maybe I want to focus on the lyrics. Maybe I want to focus on the musicality of it. So sometimes it depends on the music and how it speaks to me. And then it allows me to be able to create choreography from that point on. Also, when it comes to me creating choreography, um, whether it be to music or to lyrics or to poetry, um, I always like to check in with what do I uh, want the audience to know after uh, what what am I trying to provoke? Uh, one of the things that I love is creating pedestrian uh, moves. I don't always like to use technique moves. So when people are seeing it, I don't like for people to be able to have a disconnect and see why wow, I can't put my leg all the way up there, or wow, I can't. I'm not flexible for that, or or different things. I like to be able to create space where I'm just walking across the stage, so people can say, oh wow, I walk too. I like for people to be able to see parts of themselves um, on a stage. Uh, that's really important to me because um, I know what it's like to be able to see something on stage and not see myself. So I really love to create opportunities, no matter uh, how you identify, to be able to find pieces of yourself. Um, if it's coming to poetry, sometimes there are certain words and um, certain dictions that really support my creation process. Maybe I want to become those words. Maybe I want to create movement that really supports um, how the words are being said. So if it's hard, I like to create hard movement. Or maybe vice versa. Maybe the words are hard, but there's an opportunity to create softness around it. So I really like to play, and it really depends on what I want to say, how it makes me feel. A lot of, uh, also in my motivation is things that I've been through, uh, insights that I've had, uh, takeaways from experiences that I've been in, and figuring out ways to be able to translate that on a stage where it's um, impactful and it's very honest and it's um, intentional. So it always depends. Um, I really also really love to uh, be in close proximities to people so they can um, feel my presence or they can know that they also can be a part of the process as well. It's not just you stay there and you just watch what I'm doing. It's actually when I come close to you, do you feel the energy? Uh, what does it create in you? And allowing people to be able to explore um, themselves while they are witnessing what's going on. So I I think it always depends on um, what I'm trying to say. Um, How would I like to say it? Is there an opportunity for me to say something in a different way that is in alignment with what I want to share and what stories I want to tell, right? Um, Sometimes it depends on the audience, of the ages of the audience. Is there an opportunity for me to create a space 
for them to see not only themselves, but their process, um, not only their process, but their voice and to be create confirmation, you know? So um, I, it varies. It definitely varies, but more than anything, I always want to make sure that it's an integrity with my voice. It's an integrity with um, who I'm choosing to be in this moment, uh, what stories I'm telling, if they're my individual stories, if I'm being honest that the story belongs to someone else and letting the audience know that. Um, these are things that are a big part of my creation process. And um, and it varies. I'm realizing as I grow, as I learn, as I um, figure out new things about myself, I start to uh, create different ways that I receive and give information. All right. So here's a few moments to take an opportunity to do an activity if you're open. So when we think about dance and movement, it boils down to how we show up with our bodies. A lot of times when it comes to many of us, we think maybe I can't dance or I don't have any rhythm. And some of y'all probably right. You, you, you probably don't. But that's okay because luckily for you, we're going to challenge you to push beyond that sentiment, okay? Uh, because we're not going to ask you to dance on any stage or anything. It's primarily with yourself and then we'll, we'll build on that. Um, but I want you to own the power of your presence. So now, depending on who you are and how you show up in this world, this could be a very different experience. But here's what I want to challenge you to do. So first, I want you to go back to that homework assignment where we want you to uh, look up different forms of protest art that includes dance and movement, right? And then I want you to choose one that speaks to you, one that comes with a dance style that you particularly appreciate. So it could be ballet, b-boying, tap, riverside, uh, river dancing, modern, wh whatever you prefer, all right? Then take a moment to actually try and learn to dance. Uh, give it your interpretation if you have to, you get it. Uh, but then, uh, you can learn however much you want to learn. But then, we want you to take a few minutes and just do it for yourself. Get in the mirror, in the privacy of your own home, and do your dance, all right? But then next, I want you to take it a step further. And then, I want you to, uh, if there's other people living in your house, get one of those people uh, to show them. You know, if you're not living in, with anyone, then uh, get a neighbor or uh, get a friend on FaceTime or Zoom and share your dance. And you just talk about that experience. And then lastly, what I'm going to challenge you to do is to take it outside, right? Uh, so go if you have a, a porch or front yard or wherever you may stay, if it's right there on the street, or if there's a nearby park or a parking lot that you can go to, take your dance outside. Now, I know you're thinking, well, people don't think I'm crazy, and but we're not concerned with what other people think. Uh, being so concerned with what other people think often keeps us from stepping forward. And, and fortunately, for all these artists who were able to get beyond what people thought, it pushed them to help push aside. So that's what we're pushing you to do. So uh, get out there and do your dance. And then afterwards, I want you to take a few minutes to process. So get you a sheet of paper and just kind of write out some things in terms of how you're feeling. And here are a few questions for you to explore. How did it feel to show up in this space of dance and movement? Were you comfortable with your body? How does this discomfort show up for you every day? What did you learn about yourself? Right. Can you push beyond the fear? And if so, how can you do this every day? All right, so take a few minutes uh, when you get a chance and do that activity and let us know how it went for you. What did you gain out of it? All right. All right, good folks, well, that's all for today. So thank you, thank you, thank you for checking us out again for another rendition of Behind the Curtain Art of Protest. Tune in next week, we'll be looking at art leadership and how that fits into this realm of protest art. So. To carry us out this week, though, we have some more incredible protest artists. So check them out. You have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Hi, my name is Lily Holiday from San Diego, California, and I am a burlesque dancer, producer, and drag queen, uh, basically a performance artist. Hmm. <laughs> and I personally feel that 
my own form of protest through my art is that the fact that you don't really see too often women doing whatever they want with their own bodies. That in and of itself is a form of protest. And a lot of people have a lot of things to say about what women in general do with their own bodies. And me being on stage consistently is basically telling them to eat it. I personally feel like I do what I do because I would like to see more women not really giving a damn how they express their femininity. And I think that hyper femininity is one way in particular that makes everyone uncomfortable. And when you're uncomfortable, you're kind of forced to go one way or the other, so you're forced to grow. Also, what can you tell me when I look like, like this? What are you gonna tell me when I look like this? Nothing, can't tell me nothing. Uh, femininity is policed heavily in every corner of the world. So you might as well express your femininity in a way that makes you, as a woman, feel comfortable and whole. And this, looking like Dolly Parton vomited up a drag queen, that makes me feel just... Hola! My name is Victor De La Fuente and I am the artistic director of La Rara Noche. La Rara Noche, also known as Rara, was a performance art event where artists and performers here in San Diego and Tijuana came together to show new works. We wanted an event that was not necessarily tied to any institution here in San Diego because we felt that we needed, we need a place to just experiment, have fun, and show new ideas to the public and grow as artists. So that is what we did. It was extremely successful. It made a huge impact in our community and we are preparing to bring more to the public this upcoming year. Hi guys, my name is Kamara Jewel, and yes, Jewel is my real last name. And I'm here to talk to you about dance as a form of protest. We all know that there are tons of protests going on in our country right now for various reasons. And I just wanna let you know, movement and dance is also a form of protest. So whether you wanna do ballet, a flash mob, jazz, or you wanna vogue, <laughs> it's all a form of protest. So please take a minute, Watch my newest video, Vogue for Black Lives Matter, and check out how I decided to use Vogue and dance as a form of protest and also show joy in this, in this political climate. So enjoy, and I hope to see you soon. <laughs> Can't do it up 
in a Came through, but came through, but driven in a driven in a Came through, I cut in a Came through, I came in a cut in a I'm a C-U-N-T, cunty, why? C-U-N-T, cunty, why? C-U-N-T, cunty, why? I came in and I'm giving you Now, brr, I got his ass shaking Now, brr, I got his ass shaking And now, brr, brr I will fuck up your town, call me Hurricane Sandy Got your lights out, iPads coming handy Cause I've been a crib for my hoods and the family The bitches don't like me, but they really can't stand me Because I rock my bullets to this, they wanna shake my ass They wanna play my place, they wanna pop my pussy and feel like I'm Touch my kitty when I fix my Brain comes out, Calling me from an unknown number Me not answer the unknown Me not pick it up if it's a private call Fix it not answer the private call Who calling me, who calling me out?